USB is the big betty of the week. Samsung demos decks. The kernel counts to 4.14. And Fedora, it's the pipe. It's another great day for Linux, everyone. Let's go. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Dailies Wednesday. I almost janked that up right out of the box. This is going to be a fun one, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> where we're just going to sit back, relax, and uh, talk about some of the cool things, man. Some of the things, uh, me and P-Baby here, that, that we ran across during the week that uh, might be kind of fun to play with. So um, what, what do you think we got going on this week, man? Uh, well, uh, I think for once we don't have any Microsoft you know, direct Microsoft related stories, which I think is an improvement. <laughs> uh, pretty good. Pretty good. You've been up to anything fun? Yeah. Anything going on? Uh, well, I got the uh, two terabyte uh, YOLO raid running on this box. Mm -hmm. That's so easy nowadays. And now, uh, you know, just to put it to the test, I'm going to install all my Steam for Linux games on it just because I can. <laughs> That could be wild, man. Uh, not much to report over here. Just playing around, having fun, uh, tracking down Wi-Fi bugs in this um, Faraday cage of a house that I have. It's always fun. Um, let's just jump right into this because uh, earlier this week, uh, USB issues have been known in Linux for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's not really been addressed. And uh, is it Catalan? Man, I'm going to butcher that name. <laughs> uh, let's see. Konovalov. Andrei Konovalov. <laughs> but yeah, the person who wrote the article is Katalin Simpanu. Let's go with that. I'm pretty sure I butchered a uh, person's name, but, at, you know, it's good enough for government work. But yeah, there are a lot of issues with the uh, USB drivers for Linux. And according to um, a certain specific Google engineer, Andre Konova, <laughs> I said it earlier, Konovalov. You see, Konovalov. here's the trick, man. Okay. You admit defeat out of the gate. That way, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I want to try, at least. But yeah, he, uh, he is rather infamous in the um, exploit community because he can find just about every exploit in just about everything you put in front of him. So he discovered 14 vulnerabilities that he's reported uh, in the Linux kernel USB subsystem. And on top of that, he also found a total of 79 flaws with the drivers. Now, most of those flaws aren't exactly exploits by, you know, any definition, but they can still cause issues. Now, if you're already... Going insane and saying, oh no, what do I do now? Well, uh, it still requires physical access to your machine. So, assuming you don't let strangers plug strange things into your... Uh, well, there's a car alarm going off in the background. Neat. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you don't let strangers plug in random USB flash drives into your box, you should be fine, I think. Yeah, I mean, you know, listen, man, um, not not all of the 79 vulnerabilities have been reported, uh, let alone patched, but we will talk about that mm -hmm. a bit later with the latest kernel, and, you know, not, not booga booga, so I'll try to pull out all the OBS drives. No, <laughs> I, I mean, most of them are just like very simple, you know, denial of service bugs that can, you know, freeze the box, yeah. maybe restart the OS, no, nothing to get terrified about. You know, there's there's... A real simple way to fix a lot of this, Pedro. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. It's a magic trick I learned a long time ago with people who like plugging USB. In fact, there, there might be an, an entire department at the University of Georgia <laughs> that has undergone my, um, I warned you. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is called hot glue. <laughs> Just fill all the USB ports with hot glue. <laughs> Life hack, man. It, it, just, it, it just gets to a point. Some people are not trainable. And 
But yeah, uh, all uh, most of the articles that you've seen going on this week have been kicking up a fuss. Oh, Linux is stupidly vulnerable to USB hacking. You know what other uh, operating system is very vulnerable to having someone getting physical access to your machine? Minix. It's all be- of them. Uh, no, Minix, man. Minix is rubbish. All of them. Don't run Minix, <laughs> especially on your CPU. Oh, man. Well, Intel needs a bit of a memo. Nearly every Intel CPU since Skylake found vulnerable to USB and it was like, aha, uh-huh, aha. Uh-huh. Then guy walks out on tr- on the Twitters. He's like, Maxim, boof, just dumps it. He's like, yeah. JTAG access over USB. Well, crap. <laughs> Game over, man. Game over. Just set everything on fire. And, um, oh, man, this was kind of fun to watch. But I, I'm going to be 100% honest with you, man. It's kind of a little bit over my pay grade. It's like, okay, I, I get that this could be bad for Intel if there's some shady business in there. I think it's good for the consumer because you kind of want to know what's running inside something that you own. Right? Yeah. Uh, and let's face it, this is an OS that you have zero access to. Um it was designed so only Intel could have access to it or anyone with enough of a know-how to get access to it. But now that this particular JTAG exploit is out there, I am genuinely curious to see what um, what kind of tomfoolery can be achieved. You know, the moment the internet at large gets a hold of the actual exploit on how to get access to everything... What exactly will people be doing on their Intel CPUs? I am genuinely curious to see what will happen. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. All right, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because a lot of people ran out, especially Team Red. They were like, yeah, you see, (laughs) you got spyware all over your business. And Uh, the PSP is a thing. You kind of want to chill out because. AMD, especially the Ryzen's, have similar, uh, similar uh, terrifying things living in it and many other architectures. And But what if we go through all this, everyone digs around through it, mm-hmm. and th- th- there's nothing shady in there? Then, 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 then we've wasted all this energy getting outraged. But what if there is? <laughs> yeah, but there are many shades of shady that sounded better in my head, but <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I'm not saying that there's not some egregious stuff in there because I'm guessing Intel was arrogant enough to the point where they assumed that no one would ever see this, uh, before it ever became an issue. Uh, so there's probably going to be some stuff in there that Intel did not want you to see and they probably give certain people access to certain areas of your PC that you really don't want but it's probably not going to be malicious with intent. Uh, malicious by negligence, sure, but not with intent. Hmm. Interesting yeah. nonetheless, and it'll be fun to see what comes of it. Something we were playing around with before the show is our favorite, favorite new technology, electronic. Guess what? It's cancer. You wouldn't want to spread cancer, <laughs> would you? I don't know, man. I've kind of always wanted a Nintendo Power Glove that shot cancer. Or bees. Yeah, I'm not picky. Um, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Go back to that gif. Just just look at it. They're beating a dead horse. It's what we do. Yes, we're speaking ill of Electron all over again because we've never done that before. <laughs> hey, man, there, there, there's, you can't pass up a chance. Uh, this is a medium post. It's just written <laughs> out. And it, unfortunately, yes, a lot of these are the same things over and over. You get performance. It's a memory hog. Why Why am I launching effectively a web browser to launch a text editor? But why do people do it? Yeah. They do right. Hey, um, too long, didn't read. Electron is easy. It's right there. Um, mm-hmm. I, I like this. Uh, someone actually said that. Electron is so great. We did not have to hire new people. We can just use your web designers that we already <laughs> have in-house. And it's so easy. <laughs> um. You know, I'm actually surprised because Electron just, it, it's a recent thing, and there's a bunch of people putting out uh, their apps 
over Electron, and I'm kind of surprised because Chrome already did something like this. If you take one of your bookmarks and you drag it onto the apps drawer that Chrome has in the uh, left corner of the bookmarks bar, if you just drag a bookmark to there, you can right-click, start as a window, and there you go. You can make your own Electron apps. Um, so why is it only a thing now? Why weren't people just pushing those quote-unquote Electron apps before to the Chrome Store? Well, they were already doing it on the Play Store because Android Web View. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Um, not a whole lot to say about that. This would be in the show notes along with everything. It's nothing new, and I completely agree with it. And I don't like companies like, see, okay, let me tell you what I really don't like about it is when we look at, we, we were playing with um, Wire. Mm -hmm. Electron app. Okay. So the, the first thing you notice when you're dealing with the audio syncs and Wire, like all Electron apps, like Skype also, all your audio syncs say Chromium browser. Yep. That gets uh, a little complicated. Then we get things like Discord. Um, they're running that. Which and did it right. They did it right, but, you know, for a glorified chat program, it's also sitting, you know, well over 280 megs of memory. Yeah, but then again, uh, I will defend Electron when it comes to the shining example of Electron apps because they let you control auto game control. Again, that sounded better in my head. Uh, they also let you control echo cancellation, and they you can set the threshold of when your microphone picks up on your voice. You can do a lot of advanced stuff that you can't do in the typical Electron apps. And that's the problem, because most Electron apps are so easy to use that most developers, quote-unquote, just don't give a damn. They just don't care what you may want to do with your hardware, that you may want to do with their application. They, they don't e it doesn't even cross their heads. So, yeah, Electron is kind of like Unity. It's kind of like the um, virtual programming Eon. It's got one thing going for it and one thing only, and that is very slowly dissipating. Mm. Well, you know. Yeah. Uh... <sighs> It doesn't need to become a thing. It's going to become a thing. It's also just a massive resource hog. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah, not... Uh, you're running Chromium. <laughs> That's the thing, and you're running a lot of them. But you know, if you get a netbook, yeah, okay, both of us are on Ryzen boxes. It's not that big a deal. It doesn't bother us. Yeah, you can. I'm a huge fan of Overkill, but not that type of Overkill. It is bad. So something we talked about a couple of weeks back was something that's been kind of it's been shown off but it's never really came to a would you say functional well not functional usable <laughs> they, they've not made something anyone really wants yeah it's it's well let's just get into it this is the dex demo that samsung made of running linux off of one of their phones and yeah, it is absolutely the unicorn of unified or convergent systems, which is you have the one device, and I'm totally behind this, by the way. Uh, I love the idea of having, you have your phone, you're going about your day, you have your phone with you, and when you get home, you put that phone in a dock, you got an external GPU connector plugged into it, you got a couple of monitors plugged into that, you got a mouse and a keyboard, and you have your PC. You have everything you need in your pocket the whole day. And that is awesome. That is something I really, really want. But this, this still isn't it, exactly. Because Dex, yes, it's great. It's a dock. You can plug it in. It'll give you an external monitor, but it doesn't. still doesn't give you an external GPU, and you're still running two different operating systems in your phone, which... That's just not going to work when you're working off of an ARM CPU. To know, you know, not to piss all over ARM. They make very good CPUs. They make them... I just like that in their demo videos. Like, let's use um, something that the common person will be able to identify with in the speed. Let's use Eclipse. Yeah, that's what most people would 
<laughs> but it's it's fair it's a uh, it's a fair demo and right now they are very much targeting this particular demo at the developers because they want to create uh an ecosystem out of this and hey kudos to them if samsung is the one that actually pulls this off i might just have to break down and buy a samsung phone yeah. but I, it's not there yet it's not there yet i mean it's there the way that okay what they're trying to do, all the technology exists, it's um, just not stuck together properly. It's like the vibe. Yeah. Neat piece of kit. It can do cool stuff, but mm, I think we still got at minimum another generation. More for me, something like this would just have to be wireless completely. Eh, I, I don't mind a couple uh, of wires. Uh, if it's just going from the dock to whatever peripherals you have connected, that's fine. You see, I, mean, I know I'm going to get some hate for that, but like, as soon as you bring in the dock and I, I start having flashbacks of my Genesis with my 32X and a Sega CD and <laughs> extra Plug cords and docks, power cords. I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Just make it all wireless. I want to live in the future. I don't want to live in the future of docks. Um, that's the thing. That's cool. That's a fun project. Yeah. Um, long as there's no type of lock-in, it's. I don't know about. I think for me it would be an interesting feature to have, but I couldn't ever see it replacing anything because when I'm home, I, I want the big burly box. Yeah, but not for us specifically, because let's face it, we're the PC nerds of our particular communities. Um, if you go, say, just grab a random person outside of the street after they're done yelling at you and you get to ask them a question, uh, they will probably say that, yes, they would also love, instead of carrying around the laptop and a phone or a tablet. Okay, well, phone, what do you think the average person is going to be device. doing on those devices? You're just saying the average person, not... not Yes, just the average person, and they're going to be doing the regular Chromebook style of thing. And if they can't... So, so if, they so if can't they're doing the do Chromebook that, kind of stuff, couldn't they just Chromecast it? See, that requires another device. A, a dongle. <laughs> yes, another device. Uh, we're talking about, you know, just having... Oh, the you PC need this experience. device, then you need another device to plug in into the monitor, <laughs> then you need to plug another cable in for the mouse... Got it. Okay. Way, way less complex yes. than plugging in a Chromecast. But after, after you got all of those, it's the one device that you come in from work, you drop the, the phone in the dock, it charges, and it gives you a full-on, full-fledged PC that you can do your Facebooks or your Google Pluses or your Twitters and your emails and everything else you want to do. I like that idea. I, I do. I just don't... Uh, everything you just named off and... I would do that on tablet. Yeah, but let's face it, tablets didn't really take off as much as some... Tablets took off OEM perfectly. Like People just believe. overestimated. And see, I got a four-year-old in my Nexus 10. I'm not anywhere near replacing that right now because you don't need to. I'm That's still why. happy with my shield. Right. But again, this is us. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the market who bought tablets, Pedro. I mean, you're good. Yeah. So you know, it's like, well, the growth didn't take off like the iPhones because like, you don't burn one every two years done end of <laughs> conversation <every> Linux 414 <laughs> has arrived and Linus says it should have a fewer zero days which is always a good thing to hear naturally with most of these articles I walked right into it control F Ryzen because we got Ryzen's there's still our new shinies mm -hmm. we like playing with them I have installed this on the uh, Tipsy Danger, our current box business, running 1710 using mainline. I didn't see any issues with the NVIDIA binary blob. Basically worked out of the mm -hmm. box. Um, one small little issue I had with the Steam controller, but that was sorted. It was a weird, bizarre one that I couldn't even find on the Google, so I think it was kind of mine. What's in this new business? Memory limits. They've been increased to 128 petabytes. Virtual address space of 4 metabytes. Oh, physical Four address. petabytes of yeah. physical RAM. Just insane. <laughs> no, that, 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 okay. You have my attention. Um, AMD secure <laughs> memory encryption support has been added. That's in there now. Heterogeneous memory management has been added for the GPUs. And 
There's also a lot of fixes for the recent crop of what we talked about at the top, USB vulnerabilities that have turned up. And this is going to be the first kernel to have a six-year support cycle. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's like LTS kernel. If you have a box that you need it to run consistently over a long period of time, yeah. Yeah, the 414 is what you're looking at. Not yet, I would say, much like everything Linux. Not just yet. Give it a couple weeks, months, and then upgrade, which is probably what I'm going to be doing. Uh, because I'm running the Zen kernel right now, 412, because of the... Because he thinks it does something Sorry, and it doesn't. that's what it's called. <laughs> no, it does. Uh, there is a noticeable responsiveness improvement. No, there's not. It feels... It's psychosomatic. There is... There, it feels a lot snappier. Uh, feels. It could be. It could be purely psychological. It could be, but it does. So I will see if it helps anything when I move to four fourteen. <laughs> All right. Um. Off to that. To the races. Red Hat Red on Hat. server support. Enterprise Linux, to which everyone said, wait, you, I thought you were already doing that. Maybe they kind of were. Everyone's kind of doing it right now. Didn't surprise me at all, Pedro. Not in the slightest, you know, because we have parts like the Centrique 2400 from Qualcomm mm -hmm. coming out. The SoC server on a chip like 64 core at 1.2 gigajoules and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I was more just like, wait, I, I thought you guys already rolled this stuff out. But they absolutely are, and it completely makes sense in the server room, though, man. Um, oh, yeah. What are they and, talking and about? Linux for 7 the server? Yeah, for ARM? Absolutely. Uh, go, go, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm just perusing this. Yeah, for the server, uh, ARM makes sense. Because servers do a lot of uh, computational work over time. Uh, sure, there may be some spurts of activity here and there that will need that extra oomph to drive them, but it's mostly uh, endurance, and endurance needs power. And power, well, that's ARM's game, because clock per clock, Intel or x86 is still much faster than any ARM processor out there right now. But ARM, clock per clock, is the undisputed winner when it comes to power draw we're talking like the raspberry pi the raspberry pi 3 which has a uh, quad core arm 64 uh soc in it it uses what three four maybe five watts during peak that's pretty good that is really really good and red hat supporting that kind of you know, low power consumption, high um, sustainability when it comes to the server room. That just makes sense because, hey, people at Red Hat, they're in the business of getting stuff done. Well, the biggest thing you're thinking about with ARM, especially when you have access to a bunch of cores, low power is virtualization. And that too. That <laughs> That's where they're going to be hitting. But like backtracking and recertifying everything because you're not going to flip a switch going from x86 no <laughs> and we'll see i mean we saw the same thing when optrin because optrin actually did pretty good in the server market mm -hmm. amd did pretty good but then a lot of people didn't realize that and seeing arm coming in and i'm sure intel intel's been trying to do something low powered it seems since i was a child and they, the atoms um, they're still holding on to the atoms <laughs> that's a good luck with it and it's good to see uh it's just such a weird moon future, man. Because yeah. you, you look at the ARM architecture. You know, we've all grown up with x86, x86, 64, Spark, Saber 2. Um, but we all know, it's like, but we're going to end up ARM on some type of... Apple's going to be the first, right? Well, Apple's already... they make their own SOCs. They, just they make their own the SOCs, and I do believe the iPad yeah. Pro is a test market to see what they can get away with and start pushing some apps oh, out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but... Because, let's face it, there's nothing else going for the iPad Pro. But, yeah, no, it is ARM. They have been playing their cards right, and their entire thing is really based on that efficiency. Low power consumption and delivering as much performance as you can with that low power consumption. 
that's really good. Mm-hmm. Especially if you need to keep that server running 24-7, 365 for a decade or more. So, yeah. We will see. So, kind of interesting Indeed. to me. I, I'm keeping track of it. Open shot 241 <laughs> is out. <laughs> With two big issue, well, issues, features, I'm sorry, improved playback and image quality. Download now. Um, improved playback, that was something I've been harping on with the 2X series since I don't, it, it launched. Um, <laughs> improved stability, especially for Windows. Uh, is it really more stable? Okay, so it still crashes as much on Linux? Gotcha. <laughs> I don't know. And new video tutorials. Um and new website translations. Okay, and there's a bit of a change log down here. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing, Brad. Here's the thing. Um, it improved image quality and playback smoothness. That, that that's not even in the solar system of stuff that needs to be fixed. All right. <laughs> the, no. All right. You're like orbiting Alpha Centauri on that one, man. Um, you know, at this point, OpenShot would have to... I've, I've used KDN Live now. I championed OpenShot. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, like four months ago, Pedro. See, some people actually <laughs> listen to other people when they talk. Yes, and they uh, they also pay attention to your Google Plus and your tweets and mm-hmm. your screenshots, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, man. Uh, they, they'd have to bring do something to bring me back to OpenShot, and I'm just not seeing it. It kind of feels like a dead project. I'm not saying it is. It had its day years ago, and it just the when it was, 2x rollouts just seems kind of a mess. Yeah, ever since they ran that, well, he ran that Kickstarter. Um, it was very much back in its heyday. It was the Windows Movie Maker of linux mm-hmm. uh it did one thing and it did it reasonably well it was simple it got a little bit crashy it had something that katie and live doesn't have is a simple user interface that you can teach somebody how to use mm-hmm. in an hour and like okay what do you want to do i was like i want to take this cat video and make it with this cat video and stars and stuff i can get you done in 10 minutes in and out and it could do that. It was the Windows Movie Maker. And it's like, okay, let's work on the Windows part. And I was like, Windows, Windows is good. Windows has enough. It's like <laughs> Windows l- has a lot. <laughs> right. Let, let's not focus our efforts. But there's an update. Uh, send up some feedback if you were still... Because if I'm not using it, and I think I was one of the very last holdouts still using open because 2.0 it's just not a usable product for what we do which is not pro level because listen you're watching the show right you know better than that i'm talking about the content wise but it just couldn't handle the workloads we were throwing at it i mean it choked couldn't do it all right um not only is opera still around it's at uh version 49 and you found a copy not 49 but you you had a copy floating around on your uh hard drive man yeah, uh, I realized, because I saw you put this in the notes, and I'm like, oh, Opera. So I went to the internet tab on my main menu. Uh, oh, I have Opera installed, and it's running version 49. Oh, how awesome is that? So apparently I've had that installed for a while, and I never even bothered with it. <laughs> but it is, uh, they have a new version. Uh, they have a VR player. That means if you have a 360 video and you have a VR headset plugged in, you can do the whole 360 thing and look around. Uh, they also have a new uh, screenshot slash snapshot tools, which lets you share. Hey, hey man, I, I'm sitting back and absorbing what a browser commercial looks like in 2017. Mm-hmm. It looks a lot like a Skype commercial, go figure. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, uh, besides that, they also have VK Messenger, which, contrary to what the name might imply, does not have Vulcan. Uh, they claim it's an easy setup. Yeah, it 
just basically looked at Vivaldi and said, yeah, we need more of that. So they got a bunch of responsive design stuff going on with the browser itself, and you can just hit some toggles and do the things. They have uh, the currency converter integrated directly into the right click. So if you select a little bit of currency, like say you're browsing Amazon UK and you're in the US and you want to see how much something costs, just right click and it will give you the currency in your whatever your locale is set to in your operating system, which is a teeny tiny thing. I realize this, but it's just neat, I guess. And they also have improved incognito mode or private mode as they call them. And well, there's the opera menu and some wallpapers. So does this come across to you as features or gimmicks? Uh, because let's just go ahead and get all this up. out of the way. They whatever <laughs> they just showed with the clip and text, ma- mm-hmm. that's a waste of time. All right, that's something in yeah. should have been working on. No one's ever going to use that opera. I hate to break that to you. Um, outside of that, uh, <laughs> currency converter, you type that into the Google bar, you're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Firefox does that. Chrome does that. So. Uh, the 360 with well, the VR stuff is going to be interesting, but I didn't even look at it because I'm just almost going to guess that's going to be like Windows mm-hmm. only. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you do you know anybody who because there used to be just opera zealots back in the day. And I, I was never an opera zealot, but I used it a lot to. Uh... When I had my iPhone 3G. Yes, I used to have an iPhone, ladies and gentlemen. I learned better. Uh, But that phone lasted me for a good four years, and Safari was slow. And this was long before Apple introduced that policy that all of the browsers must be Safari reskins. Uh, So Opera Lite was actually a very light browser, and it did everything I wanted to. That's where Opera made all of its money back in the day with feature phones. Mm Mm-hmm. Because yep. for web-enabled browsing, there was one browser that you could get that sucked marginally less than the others. And it was Opera, mm. and it wasn't free most of the time. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that's the thing. I say good on them. Keep it going. And, I mean, their rendering engines, Chromium Yes, please now, do right? catch yeah. up. Yeah, it hey, is. Uh, hey, they changed to blink a while back. Dude, <laughs> let, let's talk about catching up, because we got to talk about it. we got to talk about the quantum of foxes. Meet Firefox, Quantum, Fast for Good. All this business, again, in our show notes. Um, yeah, I, I tried it. Put it on. You know, we've had, everyone's had access to this if you wanted to play around with the betas. Uh, my <laughs> list, litmus test is I put it in Google Docs and I'm like, dance, monkey, dance. Well, I, we're loading up our show notes. And it did all right. I mean, it didn't blow me away or anything, but it didn't seem nearly as chuggy as the previous version and uh i I gotta say good luck with firefox getting me back i'm not saying that with any snark mainly because uh i like having at least a duopoly and uh we don't necessarily have that right there the style inspector feels a lot more like chrome i'm digging that google is back as your default search engine the deal with yahoo's done so you don't have to make change that setting first thing anymore and uh one thing I did notice was it updated on my Android devices. Now, again, oh. I, I don't have the newest Android devices in the world. I have mm-hmm. some Nexus 7s and Nexus 10. Firefox has always run like a dog on Android. This, it still runs like a dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then again, the beta for Android wasn't really that much faster, but I've been saying over and over again that the Firefox betas are usually faster uh, than the actual released version when that particular beta version makes it into the final thing. Well, someone better pick up that phone because I called it. If you go to Twitter, if you go to Mozilla's Twitter, you've been seeing that there are a lot of people saying that it's not any faster. In fact, in some situations, it's slower and it's a bit more. Well, listen, man, you, you can um, you, you can keep swilling your haterade all you want. That's fine. <laughs> That's cool. That's what you do. It's one of your hobbies. I understand that. I don't judge. But even when they were showing speed comparisons 
with Firefox, Mozilla was showing that it was only faster than Chrome in like 50% of the test. And they were doing that themselves. So mm-hmm. like, they're being honest. You can't say they weren't being honest. They were showing the results. They're like, yeah, but there were, uh, there were uh, ever since this version were released that have been countless articles, obviously. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's Mozilla's fault that other people are writing <laughs> articles. No, uh, it's when you go to the comment sections of those articles and you start reading what people say. Yes, I know, it's the comment section. You should never read those, but ye- bear with me. There are actually some very pertinent comments in those uh, sections, and there were a couple of people that ran some of those uh, or tried to load some of those sites that Mozilla advertised when they claimed that Quantum was so much faster, and it wasn't really that much faster than the previous version of Firefox. Yes, it is. So... You can't it's... use it. You haven't. You haven't even used it. So a he doesn't know what he's talking. No, I about. haven't used it. I'm just talking out of what I read. Yes. Right. He, 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 fake news, man. Um, <laughs> I have used it. It is faster. It is noticeably faster. Uh, again, I'm in seven, seventeen, ten, fourteen, four 10, 14, 4 kernel, uh, short bus Ryzen seven. Uh, you can tell the difference. I mean, you can tell the difference to the point to... You can say whatever you want. Pedro actually spent almost six minutes talking about nothing but speculation. Based on no facts. Out of what, a, what other people said, yes. <laughs> exactly. But I can definitely tell you from having used this, and I think it's... What's it going to cost you to try it? Nothing. Go do it. Firefox is back in the game, baby. I mean, this is the equivalent to Ryzen showing up to Intel with the sky lakes you know yeah all right faster in some stuff but ryzen was able to just trounce it and you can make that analogy because it's back to being competitive with chrome i don't feel like i'm running something from five years ago anymore and it looks slick That's if you good. like that they've simplified it so go give it a try man I, i've uh, got it installed uh you can use the testing ppas if you don't want to wait, or you can just download it from their web zone and do it. Piece of cake. Done with it. You'll like it. So, a lot of people like to play around and they really hate themselves, but they know that through the hate, self hatred, it will train them for a job in the enterprise. And we call those people Fedora users. <laughs> Jordan Swung, yes. <laughs> and on that note, uh, what's new in Fedora 27, man? It's a thing. Uh, okay, I'm just not going to lie. It's out, and I want to play with it, mainly because Pipewire. I just want to mm. see what it is. This is also going to be shipping with GNOME 326, LibreOffice 5.4, and GNOME boxes. Also, the uh, GNOME builder, meh. All right, yeah, I guess that's worth but the box is kind of cool because uh enterprise linux you can just let your apps applications access your subscriptions you don't have to mess around and install rel on a guest box so Mm -hmm. it's a nice streamlining little feature there and that's pretty cool i like that fedora media writer that's uh, that's making a boot disk all right (laughs) wait really guys all right Uh, (laughs) Welcome back to 1995, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I, I know. Hey, you know, all right, I, I'm being mean. I, I shouldn't do that. In all, in all fairness, it's not the most straightforward thing to create a um, boot drive. Well, a little thumb drive. You know what is straightforward? Just booting up, like, Clonezilla, creating an image. Done. <laughs> What you you need you should do it. I don't care if you do it with a snap or a flat pack or an app image. Should inside of that contain the ISO and the loader, so you just double click on it, and it says, "Where's the <laughs> thumb drive?" Overwrites. Yeah, done. <laughs> so it's a lot easier than it is. That's cool to see. Uh, I don't use Fedora as my daily driver anymore. The one laptop that I know still function. I, I ran Fedora forever and all the times. When it was called Fedora Core 1, I was getting all excited about my first AMD 64 and uh, realized that none of the media codecs existed for it, so I didn't get to watch anything. And um, haven't, I mean, outside of Pipewire, I think Pipewire might get me to 
Pipewire Pipewire is definitely interesting, though it was a bit underwhelming to read what they actually ship with this particular version. Because, yes, uh, if you've been watching this show for a while, you know that Pipewire is going to be that uh, unicorn of media handling for Linux that's coming. It's going to take care of Pulse Audio. It's going to take care of um, GStreamer. It's going to take care of everything. But it's not there yet. Uh, right now, all it does is it provides a screen capture and screen cast recording in GNOME, in only GNOME. Um, but they say that in future releases, this will expand. So if you were expecting for something that would let you actually manage Pulse Audio in a h- human, sensible way, this is not it. If you were hoping for something that could outright kill GStreamer today... This is still not it. But it's a start. Yeah, man. It's a start. (laughs) It's progress. It has my attention because it directly affects what we do here. So, yeah, (laughs) there's that. Last and kind of least. But bit of news. Got to give it a little bit of mention, man. Uh, This is uh, the easiest application you'll ever remember. IPFS-CRDT-Shared-Editing. It's a super um, decentralized, real-time, collaborative, documents, conflict-free. Oh, so it's single source, free range. Mm -hmm. Also, organic editing in the browser using JS, IPFS, and CRDTs. It's shared editing right now, but uh, it's kind of neat. It's something similar to Google Docs. Not really, but... uh, If Google Docs only let you add the text files, yes. (laughs) Well, that's kind of... What are your prereqs on this? Node.js version 6 or greater installed, so you're going to be pretty good there. Uh, Here's the thing, man. It does all of this without a coordinating server, though. Yes. That is the big advantage over Google Docs. Well, that's kind of like the but that's n- it. <laughs> neat factor is, yeah, basically what you have right now is a text box that two people can type in. Mm-hmm. There's terminal it's programs that'll let you do that. <laughs> it's not even get it because get it is way too advanced. Uh, this is Notepad. Notepad.exe in a browser with multiple people writing text at once. That's what it does. That's it. Eh, can you see a use for it? Listen, some people are violently... This could be the start, man. I mean, this, Google. This, <laughs> time, this time next year, we could be talking about how far this project's come and it's making progress because a good open source online collaborative office suite, just not seeing that right now. Not Not something... And it's not like Google Docs is terribly advanced. It's just not, but it works. And I, I think that's definitely one of the uh, important bits about that. Oh, yeah. And it is, I guess, at the end of the day, it's a good thing to give Google some bit of competition, even if it is just a teeny tiny a little bit, teeny tiny. And it hopefully this will become a bigger thing and actually give the full Google Docs suite a run for its money. It's just not there yet. Mm. Again. (laughs) Let me tell you about the people who we try to give a run. We we try to run for their money every single week. (laughs) And uh, they're the ones helping us out over at linuxgamecast.com forward slash support or just click that support button because you were the awesome people funding this nightmare train. Keeping us honest, um, mostly... Several ways to do it. Amazon affiliate links. I want to thank each and every one of you who are clicking through those and buying stuff. Holiday season coming up. Put that in your face, organ. We got a little bit of a wish list. Uh, it's going crazy. Click on that. Uh, become our heroes. Enable cheat mode. That stuff we're going to be buying. Just haven't gotten around to it yet. But uh, if you watch Saturday show, you listen to me uh, rocking in a corner silently going, yeah, I got around to a lot of it. Um, <laughs> New egg affiliate links. If you're not into all that business, one time on the barrel, PayPal, it's brilliant, friction-free, but we have a hundred, 103, Pedro, 103 beautiful party patrons supporting us and getting some pretty cool rewards back in turn and up to and, um, and including access to our Discord channel where we hang out uh, secretly the other six days of the week. Oh, yes. And uh, you do have a bit of a reminder to give people this week about that. Oh, oh, you, you, oh, you, I was going to 
give you something to read, but fine. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, no, wait, wait. Uh... No, 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 no. Wait, 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 go, go. Ad break. You don't have a problem reading the other stuff I wrote during the show. <laughs> I just took some things and I was going to let you interject at any point if you wanted to call me Plage Marissa. No. I, I'm okay right. with that. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> just having fun. Um, hey, uh, put that link in um, IRC and Discord right now. It'll relay over. Yes. We are trying to warn, not warn everyone, just like let you know. Make sure you have your Discord linked with PayPal's. It takes genuinely seven seconds. I timed it because I have a couple of Discords that I, from different Patreons that I back. And uh, mm -hmm. you'll get put in the correct reward tiers because we're flipping that switch. After four months or five months of not doing it, we're finally getting around to doing that. So you want to make sure you have all access to all the right spots. And uh, that'd be cool. But, 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 we, we got to thank uh, our latest patrons, because that's one thing. If you uh, Ooh, yes. become a new patron, increase your pledge, say it to spare during Mark about our mothers, however you want to do it, we're going to mention your name on the show starting out with Ishan. Did I get that right? Yeah. Do you think He's I got that right, yeah. Ishan? Yeah, that, that's fine. It's either Yishan or Yishan. Yishan? <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, man. I don't know. That's a cool name. Uh. Blank Langston is a MLA. Langston. MLA. I'm guessing M Langston. M Langston. <laughs> I don't know, man. It could yeah. be. Hey, it, it could be Langston because that'd be cool. Because <laughs> you know, everyone who ever has to read your name out loud is gonna stop for a second. Like what? The, it's like when you have somebody's name is like Elizabeth. It's like, you're not supposed to say it that way. <laughs> it's just a bunch of X's and Z's and N's. <laughs> Put a number three in there, maybe a seven. <laughs> yep. Have fun with it. Thank both of you. Uh, go get your cool stuff. Yes. You now both have access to that extra hour of content we do every week just for patrons. And um, that's our pre-pre-super shows and that's our production meeting we hold every week before the big show Saturday. Now, what I've been holding in my hand, Pedro. Mm, I don't know, but it rattles. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's just happy to see you, man. <laughs> this took a while because I got it and uh, finally went and picked it up. Linux Nero, longtime listener of the show. He's here live right now. He picked us up a tablet stand for the desk. Ooh. So he's going to go on the find up standing cannibal wall. Frank is not here, but you will be able to see him Saturday where you will... Um, be immortalized yet again. Thank you, sir. That is yep. cool. <laughs> Thank you very much to Space Tanzania, Linux Nuru, putting it on a map, as it were. <laughs> okay. Uh, yep, yeah, I think that is that. And In front of the news, and we got some pie. Let's the see. slice of pie this week is, is that strawberry really, pie. Is Neat. that really a pie? I don't know, man. It, it looks like something fell on a wood tripper. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like strawberry pie. Maybe it's meat. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> they're both delicious is, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> okay, let's talk Up about uh, making pip and stall fast pie wheels. Mm -hmm. Kind of interesting. I mean, if... If I had to ever install anything on a Pi, the one thing you don't want to do is compile anything on a Pi. That is definitely a thing in fallback. And uh, talking about pip install. Now, what this guy did is he created a Python. Well, you got Python wheels, but he yeah. made Pi wheels, which is pretty cool. He went back and did uh, currently providing over 670,000 wheels for more than 96,000 packages. And this was all done without cross compiling. I was like, what? Yep. And I was like, how long did that take? Uh, well, he spun up like 20 instances and uh, it took about two weeks to get everything done. But, uh, hey man, go check out the notes for this because I, I could see this because you never want to have to sit and wait on that. No. Even, even a Pi 3 is going to kind of cause you some pain, Pedro. Yeah, and the advantage of this, uh, because he actually compiled everything on the Pi, instead of just compiling for, say, ARM v7, which is the uh, uh, Pi3 architecture, uh, everything is compatible with ARM v6, which means you can run it on the Pi2, you can run it on 
the first generation Pi, you can run it on a Pi Zero. So everything that Python pip includes for the Raspberry Pi, you can install it. And I don't know if he's got everything, everything, but he's got most of the packages in there without you having to sit and wait for all the computers. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about a difference. A uh, good example right there, taking like 20 minutes on a Pi 3, 2.5 hours on a Pi 1, or a few seconds if you use Pi Will. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah, everything's already built, so all you do is you install it, which is awesome because, hey, it's a Pi. You don't want to spend a lot of time uh, compiling stuff because chances are, if you're using a Pi, you're doing a project with it. So you don't want to waste a lot of time before that inspiration goes away, before your muse runs off into the distance. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, check out the big brains on that one, man. I, I really did it. But if you ever had to compile a lot of stuff on a Pi, you'd probably want to build a Beowulf cluster, and that's kind of what they did. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Lattle, 750 node <laughs> Raspberry Pi development clusters. Because some people just want to watch the pie burn. I mm. mm -hmm. is it, so a hundred and fifty uh, Raspberry Pi boards, counting up to a total of three thousand cores. Hey man, yeah. listen, listen, <laughs> listen. It is pretty efficient. A thousand watt idle. Um, three thousand. <laughs> I mean, for a hundred and fifty. Uh, 150 Raspberry Pi is a thousand watts. Doesn't look like a whole lot. <laughs> no, man, that thing's gonna get warm. Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> did they? Okay, what are these things gonna be? The modules fall in between eighteen and twenty thousand dollars each. Huh. Mm -hmm. So they, they must For have the some cluster modules specifically. Okay, they got a little extra secret glue in here tying these things together. I'm guessing. Yeah, they have to, and I guess it's this just speaks to the Raspberry Pi at, uh, well, this one is not cheap, but as you can see, they made them pretty bare bones. So if you can afford to create your own cluster modules, chances are you can grab all your Raspberry Pis that you have lying around the place and just build your own. Hmm. Probably not spend $18,000 on a <laughs> cluster module, but <laughs> Quite possibly, man. Um, I'm definitely down with that. I I know somebody out there. I, I look at that, and I absolutely do say, it's like, what's the use case? Like, don't care, still cool. But I do know there's yeah. the equal and opposite reaction of, like, that's exactly what we've been looking for. So have fun. Uh, I guarantee you that we've gotten a lot of stuff wrong this week, and we completely have oh, no yes. idea what... We're talking about, which begs the question, why are you still listening? But if you would like to tell someone on the internet that they are, in fact, wrong, how do they go about doing that? Well, there are several ways you can go about doing that. The usual ones just go to the YouTube comments and scream in our direction. Or if you decide to do it the proper way, go to linksgamecast.com. Hit the contact button, it's on the nav bar at the top. Then you get a form. Make sure to pick LWDW on the little drop down thing. It's easy enough. Fill out your name, your email, give us a subject, give us your message, and prove you're smarter than Vens Capture there. And away we go. We will, we will be very happy to feature your message right here. Or if we don't, because it's just a short thing, and you'll be better off served if we reply straight away, eh, chances are we'll just do that. But hey, if you do make it a point and write something interesting like our man our man did, uh, he actually posed a very pertinent question. One which you have been uh, dealing with over the past uh, couple of days, Ven. Dealing with? And reasons not to dealing upgrade with? my... I'm curve. insulted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's running uh, 4.12 right now, but don't want to make uh, my system unstable. Is there a way to test compatibility? Yeah, you, you install the kernel and see if it boots. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, in, unless you're doing production on that box, man. It's, I mean, it's either going to boot or it's not. Or it might boot and then you won't get... Like, you'll be able to get into the uh, desktop manager, but not into desktop environment proper because the drivers will just go, eh, I don't want to deal with that. But chances are you'll, run, you'll be running AMD's drivers at that point, and that's your fault. 
It is. Um, <laughs> listen, I mean, unless you're running some Moon Linux, you're going to be able to have an option for multiple kernels. So yep. it's probably also a good idea to go clean those out eventually. You know, every now and then. <laughs> I have like 412, 413, 414 on this box. And there's always a fallback. And you don't know. I mean, there's you, you always find the little gotchas, especially when you start tacking on extra modules and stuff that you build that are not part of the kernel itself. And, but usually, I mean, you're not going to break your box and let, you know what? It will kill your box and your children. Don't do it. So you can't, <laughs> you can't blame me. Never do it. I go back to a two X curl, two, four good times. Uh, or, or you just, just wait for your distro. I mean, if you're on an LTS, you're going to be waiting forever, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. If you're on Debian, you've just given up. You've forgotten what kernel versioning is. Um, I say that because I'm kidding. Uh, if you're on Fedora, you're already getting the stable-ish kernels that mm -hmm. they have. So that should be fast enough. If you're running Arch, again, that's your fault. <laughs> is it is it fair to say, unless... I think for... Because we, we both have Ryzen's right now. Yep. And we can legitimately say, well, look, there's technically a thing in the new kernel that I need to try out. Because you still got that bug. You got the new hardware and you want to try yeah. it. Mm -hmm. But I think a good rule of thumb is really boils down to, in, unless there's something broken, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? Well, that's exactly mm -hmm. what I'm about to say, is unless something broke on the box or there's a feature that you currently can't access or it's a, if it's a security thing your distro is going to push it out that's a good yeah. but yeah or just just go have fun man i mean you're going to learn you've you'll learn more fixing things that you have cocked up on your own box in Linux oh yeah <laughs> then that's how you learn yes it is 100% a thing. So apparently, unbeknownst to me, uh, we had an unintentional laugh track last week. <laughs> apparently it was me. So somewhere between um, 30 and 330, um, I'm pretty sure this is my coworker, but whatever. Please tell Peter to take the hyenas back to the Tower of London where he got him. He can pick up some cheap tickets for uh, the washing of lions while he's there. Uh, <laughs> hey, Pedro, Pedro, he, he wasn't talking about you laughing. Uh, yeah, no, but it was uh, on my end. Uh, and if you caught that last week, that was Dory. Uh, she, uh, when she gets home, she likes to unwind, and her way to unwind is to watch comedy shows on YouTube. And she laughs. And, uh, Nathan, I'll see you tomorrow at work. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Does not play well with others, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just starting to figure that out. <laughs> anyway, it's been fun. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll be back next week. Um... Real quick, we do want to mention, if you're going to be around next Tuesday, say 4.30 Eastern time in the uh, Americas, if you want to factor out, and you happen to hap uh, own that copy of Half-Life 2 that basically everyone owns a copy, and you download Synergy, we genuinely need your help to get... Well, we're trying, oh yeah, no, we suck. We're trying to beat Half-Life 2 on hard mode and cope, and we've run into a bit of a wall. So we're going to need some help. We hope a lot of you show up. It doesn't cost anything. Just make sure you have one of us added on Steam. I'm just Linux Gamecast. That's probably the easiest to remember. And uh, you can just right click and join. And that'll be brilliant. But outside of that, uh, if you want to talk to me, I'm just at Vinstone on Twitter. Just do a search for Vinstone. I'm there being mildly curmudgeon -y, but that's just kind of a thing. Get off my lawn. And you can find me on Twitter as well at unaccounted4, that's F-O-U-R, or plus plus on Google+. Plus. Google+, Plus is probably where you want to go. That's where I share most of the things every now and again. I'll see something on Twitter that I'll retweet or add a little bit of snark or some actual praise because the Game Awards are coming. And if you saw the list, you saw there weren't a whole lot of Linux games there. So gave every single one of the very few Linux games that were there a little bit of a mention on twitter 
Mm. It's going to be fun. Come see us Thursday. Just check our schedule. Thursday and Big Show Saturday. Yeah. That is starting a build. We're going to be playing some Hand of Fate 2 and uh, running it through our QA process. So that, that should be interesting. Now, it's, Indeed. It should have been time for some credits, but you know what? <laughs> That's all right. They're going. You can see them. That's all that matters. <laughs> That's all in post. I'm going to let Pedro do this one. Do what one? Um, no, I'm, I'm going to let you edit this one. You can just download the best need files. It, it should be ready. Like This is going to be our Christmas special. Oh, yeah. So you want to get people to not, not watch the show. Is that it? Yeah, <laughs> mostly, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah if i had a little bit more time i would actually take you off on that but uh no (laughs) the thought of doing work oh yeah no you see i